Right, hello everybody. This is uh, Mon here. I'm uh, parked up in a little country lane here in just outside a village called Stanton to have another go at uh, recording a video that I was doing earlier. Had some serious issues trying to get the uh, battery to stay connected and running on the little GoPro here on the front. I think we're all sorted now though. It's always a bit of a trouble trying to get your wires in the right place and everything. It's lovely and sunny, so we're going to be taking the, oh, what is it, the A134, I think, south towards uh, Bury St Edmunds, and then we'll be hopping on the A14 back towards Hertfordshire, uh, past Cambridge. I probably won't record the whole route all the way there, we'll see how we get on. Uh, so I'll be practicing a little bit on my riding for Rosper. But sort of a bit of an introduction video here. Uh, tell you what I got. So I've got a lovely BMW R1200 GS 2015. Uh, I bought this a year ago. Um, done nearly 6,000 miles on it now. I'm actually loving it. That's an awesome bike. And got a few little mods on here I want to talk about. Loads of different things been added. Okay, going through the little village of Stanton, Stanton now. So first thing is I'm testing out which is my GoPro 10 or GoPro 10 Hero. And um, this is on the, hello sir, um, this is on the crash helmet using one of the chin mounts. Which was uh, actually better than I thought it was going to be. I was a bit concerned about that like 3M sticky stuff that was just going to stick it to my crash helmet but it seems to have gone on really well. I'm being happy with the footage from the camera now that I've got a few tweaks in the settings etc. That's gone really well. Um, I have the media mod on the camera as well and the reason for that is that well because I've got a bit of extra cabling added on. So the first thing I have is a battery supply. Now the GoPros have a bit of a tendency to um, power themselves off when they get hot and this is because the internal battery gets hot powering it while they're running and the best way to get around that I found is to actually take the battery out. So how enough to get a, a GoPro to work with no battery? Well, the simple answer is I actually have a battery pack hanging on a Yang lanyard, hello, um, which is hanging around my neck, one of those USB charger ones, and I power it from that using the GoPro cable. So that's plugged into the media mod. Also plugged into the media mod is a microphone. So it's a, a homemade one. I've got a Cardo pack on my crash helmet, which I use to communicate to my uh, other half. And it comes with extra microphones. So I've used one of the little extra microphones as uh, just cut the wire and soldered on a three and a half millimeter jack plug so that I can plug it in and use that. There's loads of bikes out today. Look at that, awesome. Come out of the right side. Really foggy this morning when I came out. So that's the, the GoPro and I've also put a high endurance SD card in there as well. Which um, means they don't get so hot either, although they're tiny but it's also more reliable. Also in front of me I've got a, a little cheapy GoPro equivalent. Um, I can't remember it is, what, which model it is. That's just using a, a standard battery and a camera. I don't expect that to last much more than about 20 minutes. I ain't going to have a look to see if I can do a similar thing and have that powered from my USB down there on my um, power socket. 
Uh, in front of me I've got a connected cradle which I've just recently bought last week from BMW. This is brand new in 22 for a lot of us. Uh, before we always used to have things like, oh he's gonna go isn't he? Um, one of the things we used to have is the Garmin 5.6s on um, bikes that go in this uh, cradle on the outside and they're used for your sat nav navigation and everything um, they're, they're expensive that was the thing this bike already came with the cradle fitted but no sat nav and I didn't really want to spend that much on the sat nav previously in the past I've had experiences of paying for new map updates and different bits of things and I wasn't really that keen or sure I wanted to do that to be honest um, especially when so much of my stuff is on my phone so hence the connected cradle the connected cradle fits into the mount where the Garmin sat nav would go and that allows you to then clip your phone in front of it. It connects into the bike electrically, so there is a charging port on the side of it. However, it's a USB-C, and I didn't have a USB-C to lightning adapter for my iPhone, so I'm powering my iPhone directly from the charging socket. However, there is also a wireless charging option available. Um, my phone doesn't support wireless charging. But you do get to get other things, see that they've got their own sat nav system built in, which I'm going to be experimenting around with. Um, one of the nice features with all of this is it now lets the wonder wheel connect. So while I'm riding along here, I can actually zoom the map out. I can zoom it in. I can do things like enter names and addresses and things, which I'm not going to do while riding. Um, I can also come out and go down to the bite statistics. So I can actually get access to things like tyre pressures, things like that. Um, that's all there is on the screen. There's some trip mileage, fuel economy and stuff. Um, there's also these lean angle sensors and accelerator things. So you can sort of gauge how much acceleration or braking you've been doing. Um, the lean angle sensor, I believe, only works with the 1250s. Uh, the 1200s don't have a lean angle sensor on them. Although it would have been nice if that was connected to your mobile phone instead. So, and there's also a connectivity hub where you can connect other things. I'm hoping to see other features added as this goes along, which would be quite nice. I'm going to leave that zoomed out so we can sort of see a rough overview of where I'm going. And the connective cradle is £186. I think it's a little expensive for what it is doesn't feel like it's given me a huge amount right now. Um, obviously I've, I can connect my phone and I've got a few little things. doesn't feel like £180 worth of, of tools, of add-on yet. Um, although I did see on the update on the phone today that they've got the electric option. So that if you have, a, I think it's electric bikes or electric cars, they'll actually even give you information about where your next charging point is and things like that. So I'm really hoping to see that other information is going to start appearing in the app as well and that you can do things like that. Hello. Um, yep, so that's really cool. So just on the outskirts of Bury St Edmunds now, nice little pub there. I've never actually been inside it. I've used the car park once. Stop and get a can of drink out, but that was about it. So there's a few little mods that I've got added on the bike here. So um, on to the next topic. So the next little topic I'm going to talk about is my Rosper riding. So I've got some videos which I've really struggled to put together and put out. I did um, Bike Safe last year with the Met Police at Watford and that was an absolutely fantastic day and I'm, I'm planning on having a video out for that and explaining what that was like. The, they obviously encourage you to go on to do advanced riding and I'd already planned to do that at the time. I wasn't sure whether I was going to go with IM or ROSPA. I ended up joining, hello, joining my local ROSPA group. 
I have found, however, that being new to riding my bike, having had this only a year, I was still a bit new to it. I was trying to push myself more or to a level that I wasn't comfortable with. I think one of my major drawbacks was uh, speeding corners, the whole progression thing. Um, so I've actually decided to discontinue that training for now, or I decided that over Christmas. However, having since then, I've spoken to BMW biker training and the chap there, Ian, who was actually um, my other half's trainer, uh, where he took, he helped with some of the training that she did when she did her DSA, is that right? Or is it DA, DA, yeah, DSA? I can never remember which one that is. The direct access stuff. And she's obviously got her license now and she's now riding. There'll be some videos about that, I guess, at some point. Um, but I spoke to him about it and he said, do you know what, we do a three day course where we can do your assessment and everything and if really needed, if needed, you can do your Rosper test at the end of it. So I thought, well, that's actually pretty good because that's three solid days of riding from um, the highest level Rosper people and accredited trainers that are training all day, every day. So I'm gonna give that a go. And I'm gonna be doing that in the first week of May. So I'm sort of hoping that that'll give me the opportunity to actually get my Rosper. Uh, why do I want to get Rosper? So the first and main reason for me going for advanced biking and Rosper is the safety thing. I want to be as proficient as I possibly can I want to increase my road safety, awareness and abilities and by doing that I'm hoping to minimise the chances of me coming into involved in an accident and that if I do have an accident then it will not be a serious one. Um, that's my prime objective be as physically as absolutely mentally and physically safe as I possibly can the the next thing is um, I'm gonna be honest I, I do like the whole idea of going oh I've got Rosper um, yeah that is a thing um, it's something to be proud of I don't see anything wrong with that but also as doing that um, there is the opportunity to then be a blood bike volunteer so I'd really like to be able to do something like that. I always wanted to be a paramedic when I was growing up. And I just think the opportunity to do something like being a, you've got a leaky exhaust, sir. Um, being a blood bike would be fantastic. And helping people and being able to do that. However, to be a, a blood bike, you have to have passed an advanced motorcycle test. Um, my reason for going ROSPA is because they do actually encourage you to retake your test every three years, um, which is also the requirement, I believe, for blood bikes. Whereas I am, I think it's a single test, and I think you, you then go back and do it again yourself. So I've done a little bit of ride. I don't know what my riding's been like. I've not really been concentrating on, I was going to say not concentrating on my riding, that sounds really bad, but I've not been focused on riding as if I'm a Rospa rider. Um, I've been riding naturally, instinctively, so I'm actually interested to see myself if I've been being a good boy or not. Because it's when you're riding sort of naturally and sort of just think mind wanders, that's when stuff happens. I'm gonna have to stop, aren't I? You're gonna make me put my foot off, really? Dude, there was so much opportunity for you to go.
Cruz, uh, I'm just about to peel off of the A11 uh, to the sort of southeast of Cambridge and join the A505. Which travels across the, the bottom of the of Cambridge and takes us out to the M11 and Duxford uh, Airport. Or the War Museum. So there was um, something I was thinking about when I was talking about my Rosper experiences and advanced riding. There was a video I watched the other day by, oh, what's his name? Reglog. And they did a video entitled uh, Progression versus Restraint, which I thought was really interesting. He does a lot of um, videos in cars, but he also, he also rides bikes. Um, I believe, I'm not 100% certain that he's a class one police or ex-police driver, but he certainly knows what he's talking about anyway. So he was talking about the, yes, you want to get on with it, was the word I think I really liked. Stop faffing around. Get up to speed. If you can do 60 and there's no reason not to do 60, then do it. I thought it was a really good way of describing that. Um, restraint is deciding that there is an opportunity, but right now, today, for whatever reasons, any hesitation, you should show some restraint and just hold back. Um, I think I've sort of paraphrased what he said there a little bit definitely watch his video but I thought that sort of rung up our bells with me with the doing corners you know, often encouraged to ah just you know get around the corner at 60 you can do 60 do 60 and it's like but the bike I'm on and I'm, I'm not confident and com uh, comfortable or confident in myself and my abilities so doesn't that fall under restraint? There's a question. If it was wet, we'd slow down. Um, if there was a hazard, for example, it'd show restraint. Oh, big bumps! Eek, oh, blimey! And you're in the wrong lane, dude. I'm glad you stayed there. I'm glad I was also watching for you as well. Because I knew you'd do that. But it's sort of like just showing that restraint. I, I don't need to overtake. Put myself into a risk so don't overtake. That I think that was one of his examples. He was also driving on a wet road and he decided that on the dual carriageway because of the surface water and that he'd stay at 60. Other people were bombing past him as they always do. But that was showing restraint. So I like the whole no faffing about approach. That I quite liked. Because to me, I, I like to think that I'm not faffing around with my riding. And that if I do hold off in going into a corner or something, or I don't take a, an overtake, it's because of my own abilities and experience. It doesn't make me a, a bad driver, it just means I'm applying more restraint than maybe others might. My neck's now flapping around, my velcro's come undone. So I thought it was interesting, I've really enjoyed watching many of the, the videos to learn more about riding. So my top list of bikers to watch on YouTube, uh, in no real particular order, 
Uh, first name that comes to mind, TMF. Does some brilliant videos on reviews, bike rides, first impressions. Um, yep, very much like seeing what he does. Um, there are a number of YouTubers similar to him that do a similar sort of thing. So you've also got username Kate. You have a Biker Dan. Love Biker Dan. He's brilliant. Um, then we've had a bit tomboy with D. She's been making her own bikes over at Custom uh, Mint Custom with Simon there. They've been really interesting to watch. But she does videos and ride outs as well. Um, then we've got some slightly different variations. So we've got a couple of adventure bike riders. So there's Big Rock. And probably my favourite is uh, Brett. Uh, he does some brilliant videos on off-ride skills and stuff. And I'd love to go and actually ride with him off-road and learn from him. He's just got this real down-to-earth and practical way of right, talking about things like picking your bike up and getting on and off it and what to pack and how to approach hills and gravel and all that sort of stuff. I just really loved watching that stuff. It was fantastic. Um, who else do I watch? How many other bikers? Oh, there's... Um, Oh dear, I really apologise now if you're listening to this, because I've forgotten your name. Um, the guy who sells all the bike stuff, the Denali's and the bike cans and... I'm going to put his name on the screen because I've forgotten. It's because I'm riding, too busy concentrating on not driving to the speed limit properly. Da, 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 da. What's his name? Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. It'll come to me in a minute. Um, so there's also uh, Reglog, which I've mentioned, who does advanced driving and riding videos. Um, I've also seen a set of videos which are quite, are quite a bit older now, but they're where I started when I first started riding. Uh, a guy called Advanced Rider, who, again, I believe is ex-police. I think he was a police instructor. Some of his videos show him training, actually, in police cars and bits and pieces like that. Um, some of the rides he's done, they're super interesting because he also does ride outs and training. Um, there's another guy who does advanced riding as well and his name I can only remember as Graham <coughs> and he videos the the ride outs the assessments he does and they're quite nice because you can sort of pick up little tips from him on how they ride what to do just watching people riding properly makes a huge difference to your own rider. You can pick up and go, oh, they do that, and they do this, and different things. I like to sort of have that knowledge, sort of explore it, learn what I can about it. Uh, there's been some BMW videos, which are quite nice. There's a nice one on adventure riding like the whole level one getting started. They did um, this whole video that they did while COVID was taking place. And um, they were in South Wales demonstrating the riding and things that they do. It's actually really nice because it's like a real hand, you can get to see the hands on what riding they do. So that was quite, quite an interesting thing. Um, my plans for this year, Oh, so my plans for this year, uh, a few events that I want to do. So first one we got booked is my advanced rider training that I'm doing at the beginning of May. The very week after, I am attending with um, my gorgeous, amazing partner, 
and we're going to Biker Down, which is run by the Fire Brigade, on a bit of a rider awareness, first aid accidents and things. Should be really good to go to. I would like to consider maybe doing another bike safe, but I don't feel it's really necessary. Uh, especially as I'm doing sort of training this year anyway. I feel, in a way, I feel like I'm taking the space away from somebody else that could benefit from it. So, but I, I, if, um, if the good lady, and I keep avoiding saying her name at the moment, because she's, um, I think we're referring to her as the blue-eyed biker now. TBB. As I will. Or BB. I don't know, we're going to have to acronym a name, aren't we? So, she might do a bike safe this year, in which case, if she goes, I will probably go with her at the same time. Because I just loved going out with the, with the police and doing that. That was awesome. So, those are the plans for rides, the big rides this year. There's also a event which is organised for women bikers, which is at Triumph. They are going to be setting or trying to set the world record for the most number of women with a blur, I can't even say it, the most number of women motorcyclists in one place. Um, so TBB is going to be going to that. And um, I'm going to be tagging along to support, show my my passion for our women to join motorcycling and show that this is not just hairy men that do it of which I'm one allegedly um, so there's that there is the Peterborough Bike Show definitely want to go and do that I uh, really enjoyed that last year, it's an open air one that was our first one we did last year. So, looking forward to doing that. What else have we got in the calendar? The Adventure Bike Show, or the, um, I'm not going to. Mainly because I don't have the, like, the, what is it, like, 70 quid for a ticket? I'm sorry, guys. I'm not that passionate about going adventure riding and going to a show like that. I'd love to go and see it, but I'm not paying 70 quid for it. Well, we're going to the uh, MCN motorbike show at the NEC, which will no doubt happen at the end of the year. Um, there was another biker event that I was thinking about as well, but I can't think of it now. There's a few ride out and things in the area. Some are being done by Woolies, my local uh, BMW at North Hants. Check them out on Facebook. So yeah, I'm starting to follow a few of the bike groups around in the area and find out what what's on. I believe there's also a bike show at Royston, which we're just coming up to. Just coming up to Royston. So there's gonna be a bike show there, so that'd be good to go and have a look at and see what that is. Never been before. Check it out. Uh, where are the other bike shows? There is one other thing that I want to have a go at doing. Well, I don't think I'm probably going to get time this year to do it. And that's skid bike. So, not a million miles away from here, the Royston area, is a, a group of trainers that have something called a skid bike. And it is as it sounds, it's a wheel which is on like a giant skateboard thingy-majiggy thing and they can lift the front and rear wheel to create slip, lack of grip, change the traction um, that you have available and um, to help you learn what a front and a rear end skid's like without falling off. Um, so they do it on an airfield. It looks really good, and um, TBB wants to do that as well. I'm going to be calling her TBB now. 
She probably would sell me off for that. Especially as you'll probably go, it's supposed to be C B E B or Beb. T Beb. T Beb? How does that work? T Beb. No, that's too, that's too much of a mouthful. We just drop the eye, the blue biker. She has a blue bike actually, so I'm just going to call her TBB. That's it. Sorry, hun. I've, I've mangled your name up now. The blue eyed biker on our channel will be known as TBB. That's it, it's official. Well, I come on here as Mon PJC and I just called myself Mon. See you. Right, no faffing around, let's get on with it. So this is very much the far end of the 505 for me anyway, because this is the um, the Bulldog turn off. And we're about to go over the A1. Uh, just a couple of miles from Letchworth. sure that it was the Jag that was faffing around in front of me earlier. Yep, same one. Didn't get far, did you? It's definitely turned a bit chillier now. It was really foggy over in Letchworth here this morning when I left. And uh, the fog didn't clear until I got about as far as Cambridge. It sort of brightened up a little bit after that. It wasn't too bad. It actually felt quite pleasant, warm on the way home when I left sort of the Bury St Edmunds area. And it sort of progressively got a little bit chillier. It's a bit more greyer and constant overcast now. Which is uh, not quite so pleasant. But yeah, it definitely feels like it's chilled now. I'd definitely be put If I was going any distance, I'd, I'd be stopping and probably putting my jumper on. Or my fleece, anyway. Oh, not many times you see them out. So I was having fun in their quad on their quad bike. I've always fancied having a go at one of them. They always look like something that could have a proper good slide around on. I don't know what they're really like. So, just a little bit of history about Letchworth Garden City. Um, it's the first official garden city. Garden City is an area, or it's a town really, but a garden city is created. This was originally just all empty land. It hasn't evolved, it was designed. The layout and the roads and uh, some of the main roads like uh, this one which is Pixmore Way. They lead towards the centre of Letchworth on a sort of spiral that goes out from the centre. 
I don't know what the um, the section of roads officially called in the middle of that show. If I've not lived here long enough, really, I've never really asked. Um, but we refer to it as the longabout because it's like a really long roundabout. Um, but it's where the, the fountain is. Uh, we'll go past that. You can have a little look. Yeah, it's very green, lots of trees in the area, little public pathways. Uh, to the right is the railway station. It's a cute little railway station. It has mainline trains though going to Cambridge and into London, King's Cross or St Pancras. And you can change and go north, just one stop up the line and uh, go up to places like Peterborough, up to the north. So it's very well connected. Such a cute little railway station. A lot of history in the area. Uh, this is also the... Uh, there's an area where the, the Electric Motor Company, if I got that name right, they were responsible for building parts that went into the machine called the Bomb, which was designed by Alan Turing to crack the Enigma. Yep, the fountain's in full go today. Try and get that on the camera as I go past. Very pretty. Got these nice garden areas. There's the town clock, town hall. So there's the Broadway cinema to the right. And a local supermarket on the left. Where else could you be without your local supermarket? Looks like a typical town from here, but the, the centre of the town is really quite cute. It's, it's an open, you can drive through it, but it's a very pedestrianised little coffee shops. Uh, there's the uh, cute little railway station, just straight ahead. Dinky little thing. And then just ahead of me here, I'm going to get turn right here, but on my left as I go around here, is a building called the Spirella. It was a factory back in the day where they used to make ladies undergarments. So yeah, also got a lot of history. And then this road that I'm about to turn on to is called Icknield Way. Which I can't for the life of me remember why it's famous, but it's like a really long route right across the country. Um, I've certainly seen, oh it's obviously here in Letchworth. And I've seen parts of it, I've seen the road name appear as far over as Oxfordshire. So I'm not quite sure how far it all goes. But yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so thank you very much for watching and um, please leave a like, don't forget to subscribe, all that magical stuff that YouTubers say, you know the deal. Um, you've all been around long enough to know to walk to do. Thank you very much, hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks very much, goodbye. Yeah. Mm -hmm.